I'm here with uh, Rotem. We're at NAMM. Well, actually, we're in my hotel room right now because NAMM is just not the place to shoot a video. It's just way too noisy. I thought we would do like a video where we would just share some tricks. And this, of course, we didn't plan it, so we're just gonna sort of throw things at each other and see what we come up with. Something I really like to do if you're making an intro for a vocalist or something, if you're playing, then you kind of need to sort of sit up the tonality and the tempo and all that. And one way to do that is, of course, just to play a really simple progression, like a 2 5 one A start there, see where we end. Yeah. And just basic, like D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7. So really just basic 2 5 one Try and see what happens if we make that a little bit more interesting, what, what tricks we have up our sleeve. Sounds great. And actually, I'm just going to go a little bit straight into space, so you have some, some different tricks, and I'll explain how it works. Great. We'll do that along the way, yeah? Yeah. So this idea is here, of course, it's kind of like starting at home, to start, still starting on the D minor, and then we need to get to the C major. Really think of it as, as if you're playing an intro to... Um, To have a song that starts on the two chord, but so so you hear you just hear like setting it up, but I'm also making a little bit interesting, and it's not it's not you, you keep people's attention with something. And what I'm doing here is of course the two chord is just a two chord, the one chord is also in this case just a one chord. So everything that's so exciting is happening where I you would have a, a G7, and I just reinterpret the G7. I really love to do this. You can do a lot of different things like that because also dominants are just super flexible in yeah. that way. In this case, if you have like an also dominant, like a G7 altered, then I can replace that with this chord. And that's of course, yeah, well I mean it works, yeah, you know? Yeah. So the whole concept here is of course that I'm playing something where the ear expects a dominant, but it gets like this sort of surprising major 7 sound with a major 7 flat 5. And really this is just a G7 altered with, um, mm -hmm. with a flat 13 and a sharp 9. Yeah, and then you can cool. resolve it like that as well. So that, that's a really good one, so perhaps to just, just take a short detour and yeah. then let the audience go, oh, okay, I get it, good. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. I guess, I think for me, um, it's exactly this kind of thought process of uh, tension and release and seeing this arc of less tension, more tension that oftentimes happens where the dominant is and then the release on the one. So again, less tension, then D minor, more tension and then release. And then start simple, like again, just D minor 7 9, maybe to first inversion or getting this kind of like D minor 11. And then on the on the G7 on dominant, sometimes I like to use the triple substitution. So instead of G7, I think of D flat, and then maybe I'll do the 2 5 for that triple sub. So basically, kind of like A flat minor, D flat 7, uh, maybe with a little bit of extension. So. And really, what, a lot of what you're using here is also like what, what makes that work is also because you you can make like a melody on the top totally, strings that, that, totally. that sort of ties the whole thing together. Because yeah, that that's also at least very much what I go for when you want to have surprising chords. They sh they kind of don't fit, but you have to get it to work. And you do that. You tie it together with other things. Then so you tie that together with bass movement or melody mostly. It's kind of like the, the strongest voice leading you can, you can work with. Huh? Yeah, and I think the conviction also like if we go further out later yeah. on, like the conviction of, of playing something that is not right quote quote but has some integrity melodically, rhythmically or emotionally even, yeah. uh, kind of can bring this 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 element of closure um, to, to a real place of yes. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. So um, as an example of that, so another way that, that's nice to make sense of things when we have the 2-5-1, so you can look at that first chord, the D minor chord, as being a subdominant chord, mm -hmm. which means that you can just play another subdominant chord instead of that one. And there are like, that's a big topic. Big world, yeah. But uh, <laughs> if you just take one that's like like really close, then in the scale, another subdominant chord would be the F major 7. Mm -hmm. And then you can just say, okay, I'm gonna start up there, and then I'm just gonna see if I can start walking somewhere else. So that could give you something like this. Like. So the idea here is really that I'm just starting on the F major 7 and then I start, when you play chords you can kind of walk around in the scale, so I just start walking down. And now instead of thinking about this as like, okay I'm substituting something from the dominant, 
I'm not really, I'm just trying to find a way to get to the C major 7 chord. So it has to have some sort of forward motion in there. And one thing that works really well and also is like a bit surprising but also makes a lot of sense is when you have like these parallel chords moving. Mm. So what I turned that into, actually I think I kind of got that from you last time we made a video. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like you do that really a lot on, oh yeah, well, that, you can watch that video. Uh, <laughs> so what I do is um, E flat major 7 to D flat major 7 and then down to C major 7. And then the way you kind of tie it together, like we talked about, is, is melody, right? So... Mm, perfect, yeah. Yeah, it would have played Yeah, the major 7, 9, and they're like, oh, oh this one is there. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Yeah, I guess in that respect, I, I love thinking about harmony as uh, sort of like geographical points. So let's say, you know, we're in LA, mm -hmm and we want to visit a good friend of ours in New York so there is a path we need to go and we can just kind of fly from you know let's say from LA to New York this is a, New York is our target so LA to New York just direct flight but we can also say hi to a good buddy of ours in mm -hmm. you know in Kansas and then we can go back to to Egypt really really far <laughs> and then go to New York you know so so there are a lot of ways and I'm thinking about it this way because we can indeed think about our target point is as a target and get there but the path can change quite drastically so it could be this or it could be this or any kind of path so in that sense uh, I guess still like um, normal kind of path would be just expanding the tension and kind of like visiting a few maybe nearby places so I'm yeah I'm, I'm kind of like basically just leading to the C with this chromatic motion so F sharp F diminish B7 or some variation of that to E minor, E flat 7, D minor, maybe D flat 7 to, yeah. to C, you know, or this C or any of these are, are fine. So basically, kind of like creating this um, loop of, of some secondary dominance to eventually. Yeah, just extending the journey, really, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a, that's a great one. And we can find it um, just thinking about uh, a song like uh, I Should Care. B11 would play the second A yeah. instead of D, and literally instead of 2 5, 3 6 2 5, he will play this. Um, yeah. Or uh, Wrap Your Travels and Dreams. A lot of these songs, so the, the second time, Bill will play these kind of like alternate starting on versions. The, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a really common one, like starting on the sharp four. Yeah. And it's funny also because you can, use, you can use that one, like I should carry it if it's on the two chord, but you can actually also use it if it's on the one chord. Like you have uh, yeah. Pennies from Heaven or something like right. that. Right. So then, yeah, yeah, totally. that's a nice one. So that's one, in a way, like, so if, if I return to, because I, I kind of like to think in this, the functional harmony thing, then to me that's a subdominant in C, the F sharp, half mm. diminished. And the other place where I would go with, with uh, finding sort of other chord colors, which I, I really love working with, is to find all the minor subdominants. Nice. Because that's just, that's just one of the most beautiful sounds in major. It's, it's just having chord where you're like, oh, this is a minor chord, and subdominants are just the best ones. Totally. <laughs> there are really a lot of things you can do with it. So one of them that I kind of like to do, and you can, again, kind of using this, this parallel movement thing, or, and also diatonic movement, yeah. is to say, well, I want to go not to the five chord, so you, I'll start on the two chord, right? So, but then I want to go somewhere else than going to the five. So I can make that sort of a stepwise movement. And then I can go into like the minor subdominant thing. Nice. So that's really just a, you kind of like, and, and what part of that is like, again using the, the parallel thing, that, that just, if you have sort of these big colorful chords that are working, working in parallel, then you can, you can get away with just sort of slowly walking out of the scale, <laughs> kind of. And that's, and then it's still, you're walking up something where I can still get back home. Yeah. Another thing that maybe could be cool to try and do is, is, just some chromaticism but with color so this will be a little a little more um, chromatic I guess but just starting on the two but then maybe going oh, yeah. right so even basically two and then going to the flat three the flat six so it's kind of like the six in minor yeah. and maybe even two half yeah nice so it's not crazy, but just like basically borrowing from that um, minor tonality where we have the E flat. And don't you, a, don't you think also that something like, I don't know if you have that, I really love to use major seven chords when I'm messing around with the harmony because mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't have as much direction. You mean like, just like 
kind of as collars, just like yeah, yeah, because, like, because they, they like it's a little bit like if you're if you're playing something and then you just immediately go to some almost random major seven chord. If you just sustain that, it's kind of rest in itself. It doesn't go. If you play dominant, it's going like I want to go to the one chord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. in the context, like the, the especially the major seven, but also the minor seven chords, they're much more like oh, this is a nice sound. If I, if I just stop here, well, it's okay. And I, I like it actually also well, improvising. So sometimes like. I don't know, like I'll I'll be playing a blues in F, whatever, and then all of a sudden I can hear this like this A major sound. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I'll be like, okay, I'm just gonna go for it, and you know, I'll yeah. be the bass player that if I play A, he'll play A. So it's cool, you know. So it's like, <laughs> so it's kind of like just like a completely different, you know, color, and then and then you're back, but you know. Yeah, probably you're going. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so you so just four, yeah. four bars, and then you're just. Coming back in, uh, yeah, yeah I, and, I've used it like that. As well. and, and thinking about like the the chords and colors, and then you know we're breaking it down as functions, but at the end of the day, it's just sounds. Yeah, it's like what do you feel when you hear this? How you know if you're cool with this sound, it's it's great. This yeah. is definitely very harsh, but you know, but sometimes that's the but, sound it has but to be. Exactly, yeah. and and it's like it's kind of like understanding that you like spicy food, and sometimes you want a little bit, and sometimes you're like hit me, just hit me. <laughs> you know, it's like and that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. Can I come with another one? Uh, actually, one that I, I don't know, it's not used super often, uh, but I, I think also it's another one that's like, that I really like to use, it's really beautiful, because we're talking a lot about direction, so now I'm, we're messing around with, uh, with the 2 5 part of the sound all yeah. the time, right? But to me, the most powerful place to mess around, but it's also a little bit dangerous if you're playing with a vocalist who kind of has to hear like where mm, we're at, but, yeah. or, or anybody else who has to hear what, where we're at. But at the same time, it, it's really, really powerful to just do something with the one chord. So you really set it up. You're like, I can really hear where we're going, and then you really go somewhere else with like, and that's where I get into sort of the really weird sounds. You can do that in many ways. Like I like. That's sort of pretty, pretty standard. You still hear what's going on, but you can also go to other places and then really use again, kind of in the in the par parallel movement stuff. Where you get into so it's one of those chords that you don't. There are not that many places this chord exists. But major seven sharp nine sharp eleven is just a yeah, beautiful that. sound, you know. Just ask Monk. Yeah. And then you can always you can always resolve it later, so you don't yeah. get fired. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can go a little more extreme. I think one thing that is nice sometimes is just like finding voicings. So even thinking still about the functionality of the 2-5, but just saying like, oh, I'm going to use a color sound that is, for example, this is a sound I like, mm -hmm. uh, which I think about this is D minor, um, which yeah, is, sure. I don't know it makes what's sense. happening there. Yeah, it makes sense somehow. But it's with nine and, 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 and the idea here is like, there's like, like all these kind of like, um, you know, seconds, you know, these like, these mini clashes that sound really cool. Um, I'll play it here for a second with the, the G minor, so, so we can hear that sound. Right, so I think sometimes just like finding a voicing that you like and then moving between oh. this, yeah, maybe yeah. this, <laughs> like a strong D minor. Oh, yeah, that's G. a nice one, yeah. And then you can use that idea, for example, of this D minor and then maybe even as a color, so mm -hmm. I'm kind of playing this D minor sound, and then I can reinterpret this also as a yeah. D major, C sharp major, and C major. So in my mind, right, I'm using the same shape and the same kind of like basically cluster, if you will, or sort of this voicing. So I'm thinking D minor, and then I'm thinking D major seven, C sharp major seven, D major seven. So I get this. Oh yeah, that's that, that's a really nice one. Yeah. So it's it's it, it's it, kind of the voicing is like making it logical, right? That's like why we accept because we already yeah. we hear the sound and that's. But you and also if you do this just with a major triad, it's probably not going to be it, it's it's going to be too clear. Yeah. It has to be a little bit vague, otherwise it doesn't work. Like, yeah? yeah. There is this tension. Yeah. Level it's that like, you want. I'm not sure what it's, it kind of fits, but I'm not entirely sure what it is. And then you start moving that you start moving that around. Yeah. yeah that's that's a great idea actually. Yeah. That's not something I do. I think sometimes what I'll do in terms of color is more to go for like other colors on, on the chord. So you, like I sort of the, the standard place to go is like the minor thirteen for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe also because I was told that I was not allowed to play that on this <laughs> <laughs> Nice. 
So that's a, and that's a well, the thing with that one is of course if you have a two five one like a two five, then the important thing that happens is just that the C moves to the B. So if you put the B already in the D minor chord, you're kind of ruining that. That was sort of the the problem with it. But but that's also just a nice sound, and you just have to make sure that there's a different kind of. Uh, thing happening when you go to the five chord, but then you just alter it. Yeah. Then there's there are a lot of notes changing. Look, then everything's still working. Nice. No? Very yeah. good. Um, another like kind of like maybe stream of thought. Um, so I'm going to try and hit C major, but assuming I have more time and maybe I'm not playing with the vocalist, <laughs> okay. you know. So maybe even if I start in this D minor. I can try to just kind of like move one note to get this like motion, yeah. right? So it's not necessarily functional, but I know kind of where I'm going. Yeah. So I'm starting with D minor and I'm like, ah, oh, okay, you can think about this as, you know, D minor over C sharp, but maybe I'm even getting to D flat. Yeah, so there's yeah. like this like... But so when you do stuff like that, you kind of do that on the spot almost. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. It's kind of improvising on the spot. So I'm, I'm thinking about the sound as color, but I'm deciding I have like maybe a, a mini rule for myself. And again, it's you know I'll change it if I don't want to stick to it. But that is like there is a lot of voice hitting because I'm not moving a lot of. There's no. There's, the there's no situation. like jumps. You yeah. know, it's like maybe uh. Right, so some of them maybe can be weird at times and like, you know, just kind of trying to hear it and then you stumble and if you don't like it, you can refigure it, but it's, it's a nice kind of like way to to expand the, you know, what you're likely to play because you can just kind of like discover. Yeah. It's nothing complicated, just No, try no, it. it's just try it, but it's also, but you're, just, you're not really thinking on those course. Yeah, in a way, it's, it's more the motion, yeah. like the, the inner motion, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I really love that idea. So maybe that, that's also enough food for thought, for a lot of ideas. I'm of course curious, like, if you have the greatest reharmonization of 251, your best trick for one of these chords, the stuff that you really like, leave a comment. Yes. We, we want more. We want, we want to know, yeah. <laughs> and then check out Rotem, he has a great YouTube channel, but you probably already know him, because I can see in my analytics that you probably already know him, but it's definitely worth checking out. And uh, for the rest, thanks for dropping by. Of course, thank you. And thanks for jamming. Of course. Probably there's going to be some videos of us jamming. Yes. If I can find some. Hell yeah. Yeah, and then we'll take it from there. See you next time.